Hey, hey, you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Y'all already know what it is. You see the title of this video. This is Real Housewives of Potomac, R-H-O-P, season six, reunion part four. Y'all, we're done. <laughs> it's a wrap. We're almost there and happy days are here again. I know a lot of people <laughs> this season wore on their last nerves. Your edges is falling out, teeth falling out. Baby, Potomac, always. <laughs> Since last season, our nerves have been frayed, honey. I, I don't think we've recovered. <laughs> so let's go in and talk about it and end this on a good note so that we won't be walking away from here pissed. <laughs> so let's do that. But really quickly, thank you to everyone who joined me for my surprise pop-up live. I was tipping and I was sipping and we was talking. I had a really, really good time. I promise <laughs> I will try my best. <laughs> if my schedule will allow me to do it, I will try my best to pop in more. But we had a really, really, really good time. So let's go ahead and get into the final part of the reunion for Potomac. So we pick up where we left off. Nicki Minaj is telling Ashley she doesn't have a storyline, which she doesn't. She didn't lie. And I will say this, Nicki did make some good points and I'm shocked to say that <laughs> but I also will say this I like that they brought in a guest host as I said in my last review I think that if we have to endure three or four parts to a reunion why not bring in someone from the outside um it doesn't have to be Nikki every time let's not do that but let's bring in other fans of the TV show like who's a stand for Beverly Hills or the OC or Salt Lake bring them in to conduct a reunion or just you know sit around for 30 minutes oh, TV time and ask questions we have to do this because we need to keep the audience entertained we have to keep us entertained because not that Andy isn't good but Andy has he has too many biases and that can get in the way from being fair. But I also like that Nikki, she favored some in some areas and favored others. And here's the thing that Nikki said, that it was like sitting around talking to your girlfriends. And I think that's what I liked about it. Keep that dynamic, Bravo, because that adds a different layer. I mean, hell, pick pick some of these YouTubers on here. You ain't gotta pick me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't pick me, because I ain't gonna be nice to Ashley. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to be nice to Ashley. I'm going to ask all about her husband squeezing and grabbing who's behind without consent. So I may not be the PC version that you want. But I do, in, in all seriousness, for real, I do think that they should look to some other uh, content creators to choose them to kind of, you know, do a part of the reunion. I thought that was a good idea. So anyways, Nikki was asking Ashley about her lack of storyline. And Ashley was like, so you're saying my family isn't my storyline? Ashley, we talked about your family for a 0.5 seconds. So no, they weren't your storyline. But the light bulb clicked for me when she said, well, I've been on this show for six years. And so I, I translated that to mean that Ashley feels that she's given all she can give. And so in her six year and beyond, she's just going to ride the waves. I'm glad you said that, Ashley. Andy, let's usher her out. There's nothing more to give us. Unless she sadly, you know, has a divorce, there's nothing else we need to talk about. What is she going to do? Get pregnant again? Great. She, get, she gets pregnant again. She's been pregnant twice. We've seen that before. She's not a new mom, although Giselle and them will tell you she is. She's not a new mom. She'll have another child. Great for her. Other than that, what's new in Ashley's storyline? At this moment, I can't say what that is. So go ahead and usher her right on out. So then Wendy chimes in. She says, you know, I really wasn't mad at Ashley because I don't feel she was being malicious. <laughs> I, my opinion as a viewer, Ashley was being malicious. She sat in the kitchen. I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. You can't tell me she wasn't putting on for the cameras when she was doing all that. All that and this didn't make any sense. And that's why when Candace heard and caught herself, she said something to her. I was like, listen, why did you come here and do that? And so I found it odd that Candace interjected and was like, well, you know, she had just given birth and, you know, she had to come to work. Candace, that's not what you were saying when you kicked her out the goddamn house and told her to pack up her milk udders and go home. <laughs> that's what you said, not me. And so it, it perplexed me 
that Candace would take up for her. Like, I would have just sat there because we know for damn sure Ashley wouldn't have taken up for you. She sat there and said she hadn't even listened to your album. That's how little she cares about you, your talent, or your projects. And you sit up here taking up for her, baby. I would have sat back and said, go ahead, Nikki. <laughs> Let me sit all the way back so you can have a clear view. But you want to sit up there and interject. And that's why Nikki was like, whoa, Candy Gap. Like, I'm, can I finish talking to Ashley? And I also will say something else. Candace, Giselle, Mia, and Karen got on my last nerve, constantly interjecting. It was a mix of disrespect for the guest host, and I'm trying to impress the guest host. And Karen, she kept trying to rush Nikki. Like, okay, come on, come on, come on, next, next. Nikki called her out and was like, well, wait a minute. I'm the grand dame. Oh, no, I was telling you, keep going, because I like the line of questioning. No, you was trying to rush her through because you were tired. And she called you out, and you didn't want to tussle. <laughs> you know how you girls like to tussle? You didn't want to tussle with Nikki, so you played it off. You didn't think she heard you being rude and snide. Yeah, grand dame, I, I, I peeped your game. Would you do that to Andy? The answer's no. And I got some from Wendy, too, for her sneaking around in Nikki's cars, but we'll get there. So then Robin chimes in and says that Ashley didn't expect what happened to happen. So she didn't come there to stir up drama. And Nikki was like, are you serious? And, and here's the thing. We know that to be untrue based on how she responded. Ashley lied and said, I was hearing multiple different stories. No, the only story you heard was from Giselle. You weren't hearing multiple stories. You took what Giselle said and ran. Moving on. Next, we get to Robin's section of questioning from Nikki. Um, and well, first of all, Nikki said that she could tell that Robin and Juan had some type of extra sexual chemistry and that Juan <laughs> has never looked happier and I I just I just want to know what type of mind expanding drugs do Nicki Minaj do because that's not the season I watched <laughs> okay when Nicki was asking everyone else were they serious Nicki were you serious I don't know if she got this confused for an earlier season of the, the Atlanta Housewives. I don't know what she talking about. But one thing I didn't see was Juan happy. And the other thing was them having some type of extra sexual energy. I have no clue. You all tell me if you saw that. I could probably be misinterpreting that. But I didn't see that between Juan and Robin. No, I didn't. But anyways. So Nikki was like, you know, before this season, she never really bought in to Rob, you know, following behind Giselle. And she said, but when you asked Giselle, are we mad at Ashley? That's when it was like, oh, you, you kind of are of a little follower. So here's the problem I have with Robin. Robin not only lies, but she feigns ignorance. Because she said to Nikki, well, I didn't mean like, are we mad at Ashley? I, I mean, did you forget I was drunk? I just want to know what was going on. Nah, then you would have asked what was going on. You looked at Giselle and asked her whether you all were mad at Ashley because you need to know how to move accordingly. You can save that lie and feigning ignorance for someone who can't do it. There's a theme with Robin. She never knows what's going on. And honestly, it's not hard to believe because she has a, a kind of dopey energy about her. You know, hoo -hoo, you know, she does all that goofy stuff. But Robin has good sense. She knows what's going on. And how she flies under the radar is pretending that she doesn't. I, I see you, Robin. I raised you 30. But anyways, Wendy points out, you know, you say you were drunk. And you weren't drunk at the Reasonably Shady podcast party. Because even when I invited you to my trip, you said we, as in you and Giselle, that we weren't going. And so that was a good point, but her and Robin kind of win this back and forth. And Robin says, well, you can't take a shady invite. And Wendy was like, touche, you can't take a shady invite. Right? Giselle, Robin, Ashley, Mia, Karen, they can dish it, but they can't take it. Because actually, I agree with Wendy. Both of them were shady invites. You all invited people and said some people were your haters. And then when she said, you two can bring your luggage, you got mad. But what did you and Giselle bring? Your raggedy luggage. So she wasn't lying. <laughs> At least she was speaking facts. 
okay? So the next, I think they asked for Robin and Giselle secret lovers. Honey, no, but I think Nikki asked if you had $50 billion, would you have sex with each other? And Giselle said she would do it with her, Robin and Ashley. Here comes Candace again. Um, Candace, boo, you done lost me. <laughs> you gonna chime in, I would join. How are you gonna join something you weren't invited to? What, as much as you talk about Michael, why would you want Ashley's gnarled fingers and lips anywhere near your body? Knowing where she puts those fingers. <laughs> Knowing what the, just the thought. Next, we get to Nikki asking Robin, did she believe that Michael was attracted to Juan? And Robin, without blinking, said yes. And if you all go back to this segment, Ashley was fuming. You know, she was making faces. She was doing all, all this. Yeah, someone asked about Michael and we're, and we're, and we're, and we're going to talk about it, Ashley. Andy isn't here to save you, okay? So Ashley said, well, what do you mean attracting? You mean like a friendly attraction? Honey, there's no such thing. What other way is there, okay? Sexually attracted. Yes, he is. If a person says they want to have a sexual interaction with another person, I'm assuming there's some attraction there, Okay. Let's not play stupid. And don't think it's lost on me how offended Ashley was when Nikki was like, you know, men usually, you know, I find it interesting because men, especially black men, long story short, she was saying that most of them are homophobic and they wouldn't, you couldn't talk to them in a sexual manner without them being offended, right? And, you know, Nikki asked Robin, does Juan have any other gay friends? And Ashley said, oh, 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 oh other. <laughs> Michael is not gay. I found that so interesting because I think that Ashley identifies as a bisexual woman. Why would it be a problem if Michael identifies as a bisexual or sexually fluid man? I don't know. I just, I feel like there's something they're trying to cover up for a reason. I have no clue what it is. I don't know if Michael himself is ashamed because he has, he has children, he has ex-wives. I don't know what he's trying to cover up. But at this point, I think it's very obvious, right? that Michael is either bisexual or sexually fluid. It's none of my business. But when you're around here on a reality TV show, you're sleeping around um, with other women, right? And you're married to Ashley. You're grabbing men by the buns without consent. I don't know what you would call that. And see, Ashley, you can't get too mad because you turn a blind eye, literally. You turn a blind eye to Michael's behavior. And so Ashley was very offended I, I don't remember exactly what Ashley said, but when she was like, there's no attraction, what attraction? There's no attraction. She was saying something under her breath while Robin was talking. And I think that if they come back next season, you're going to see them pick up with that because Ashley was pissed that Robin answered it truthfully. Moving on. Next, we get to Giselle's segment. And Nikki says, listen, you are strikingly gorgeous. And Giselle says, yes. She said, and you know it too. Giselle replies, yes. So Nikki did all that buttering up <laughs> just to let me the boom on her ass, baby. She said, listen, you're beautiful and everything, but from season one till now, your looks have changed. Do you think your beauty is fading? I said, ooh. Now let me say this, and I'm talking to myself when I say this. We have to kind of unlearn and move away from talking about women's physical features fading because we don't discuss men in that same range, right? Now, if you live long enough, right? And that's a blessing. Everyone will age. You're not going to look 20 when you're 80. You're not going to look 40 when you're 70. Now you can look good for your age and some, some people do age better than others. It's true. But when we start talking about beauty fading, we don't address men in the same vein. We don't talk about how they have lines in their faces, how their skin is creping or sagging or you have crow's feet. That is something that we, even myself, that we have to move away from. So with that being stated, I will say while I'm trying to unlearn, I will be honest and say Giselle does look a lot different because just, I, I love... Um, I'm a huge fan of people who have like different type of angular structures in their face. And Giselle's face was very angular. You know, she had the jawline, then she had the, the, um, 
the dimples right here, her face doesn't look the same. Matter of fact, it looks swollen. Now, Karen last season said that Giselle's ankles and knees were swollen because she was now calling. That's what Karen said, not me. So if that is true, maybe that's contributing to some of the swelling of the face because realistically, you all, we don't know these characters outside of the show. We don't know what they engage in and what they don't. But there is a clear difference. And I mean, I, isn't Kenya in her 50s? Kenya looks way better than Giselle. Even Sheree, Sheree looks good. Cynthia looks great. I mean, drop did gorgeous. And not that Giselle isn't pretty, but her looks are starting, you know, to kind of fade away. And I, I would be interested to know, but I think it's more so based off genetics. But her father looks good. Giselle's father's look good, so I don't know what her mother looks like, but her, her, her looks are starting to kind of sway a bit and I never heard Giselle say yay or nay to that what she did do is say that the reason why she said the six feet under and this wouldn't fade is because Ray hurt her by basically saying that you need to hurry up and find someone before you die alone and, and instead of saying he was gonna be six feet under she should have just said she was hurt so while we did take two steps forward with Giselle <laughs> we then took 20 steps back when she lied and said that she don't a shame Karen like we're not doing this I'm not going to play in Giselle's make-believe make world. You said that woman had uh, Dr. Shaw's on. You made fun of her wigs and everything else. You have also a shame Karen. And between Karen and Giselle, I don't care anymore. Moving on. Next, before we get to Karen's segment, right? They show Wendy going through Nicki Minaj's cards on the table next to her. You all, Wendy was out of line for that. And it actually pissed me off. And let me tell you why. Wendy has a problem and it's a control problem. She has to be in control of everything down to the fact that you want to slide Nikki's cards over so you can read them. Uh, Ma'am, would you have done that to Andy Cohen? If the answer is no, if the answer is no, then you should not have done it to the guest host. It was very disrespectful for you to put your little gnarled fingers over there and pull her cards out so you could read them so you could know what the questions were in advance. Because you were hoping, you were hoping you saw the questions that were for you. So you could prepare in time. Miss, you can do it off the dome. Oh, I argue with White House correspondent. I don't need to rehearse. Oh, you don't. And before, because I already can hear it. I can hear somebody typing in my ear. Before someone says, Ramona did it, I don't give a damn. It wasn't right when Ramona snatched Andy's cars out his head, and it's not right what Wendy did. Moving on. Next, we get to Karen. It, it damn sure isn't a lot to talk about Karen, but I did want to point out this one thing. Nikki was asking Karen, did she think she proved the point to Giselle that basically she want the one to get into a squabble with? And Karen was like, yeah, you know, I said what I said, but I was ashamed, but I had to do what I had to do because she wasn't going to get up off me. And so sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. And I said, oh, huh, isn't that interesting? Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire, but when Candace does it, she goes too far. But it's not too far to say someone's a drug addict, an alcoholic, that they have a hot box to talk about them being in an insane asylum because that's what you were referencing. And you backed up because you, you were scared to follow through because you knew the backlash you were going to get. I didn't know what Sing Sing meant. I, I bet you didn't. Where'd you come up with those words from? Because I'll be honest, I had never heard of Sing Sing. I was like, what's Sing Sing? <laughs> So you heard it from someplace, mama. Don't, don't sit up here and lie, lie like that. And that's what I don't like. You can dish it, but you can't take it. And then what was worse is that Karen said, well, I didn't believe the rumors I heard from the blog. You didn't believe them, but then you decide to bring them up anyways. That's grand dame behavior. Repeating lies, repeating rumors that are, that are not substantiated. That's grand dame behavior. 
you can keep it moving on. So next we get to Mia. <laughs> we got to breeze through Mia because we still got Wendy and Candace and everything else to talk about. But Nikki tells Mia that she found the scene where she was talking to her mom about her dad, one of the most touching. And Mia says, you know, it hurts when my mom speaks badly about my dad because I never saw him act poorly, but my mom doesn't have that experience with him. And Nikki goes, well, it's not okay for her mom or your mom to hurt you because your father hurt her. I agree with Nikki, but here's the thing. Mia has a very heroic view of her father. And I don't know where it came from. I can't say I didn't grow up in her household, so I don't know. She seems to be rather forgiving of her father and not so much her mom. You know, I mean, Mia, your mother literally told the story of how you burnt yourself, right? Because you were trying to fend for yourself while your daddy had one of his gals in the basement banging her out. Your father started her on drugs. But yet you still have this love for a man that did some serious damage in your mother's life and consequently your life, right? And so this part, a light bulb came off for me because Mia was like, well, you know, my mom is doing better. She watched herself on TV and my mom is currently watching my children. She's staying in my house because she loves me. And when she did that, I was waiting for the camera to pan to Candace's face because in my opinion, she was talking to Candace when she said that. And I said, oh, I said, that's what it is. Mia has never believed that her mother loved her. And so the way she said it was such aggression, it's like she has to say it to prove it to herself. My mom loves me. And I feel sorry for me. And don't get me wrong. There are aspects of her life that I feel sorry about. Her being in foster care. Her waiting for her mom and dad to come and get her. And she's sleeping on a cold floor. Ain't no telling what Mia experienced in foster care. So I do feel sorry for Mia on a certain level. But just like you and Nikki agree that your mom can't hurt you because your father hurt her. You can't go around hurting people because your parents hurt you. It's the same thing. That's just my observation. The light bulb turned on for me and I realized she's trying to convince herself that her mother just has this immense love for her. And I can't say whether her mother does or does not, but I think Mia doesn't believe her mother loves her. So anyways, so next Nikki moves on to something a lot more lighthearted <laughs> and she talks about, you know, Mia's multiple surgeries <laughs> and she says, you know, did you do that so that you can climax better or did you do it for the physical appearance? Like what's going on? What type of freaky deaky stuff you and Gordon got going on? And listen, y'all, we're going to keep this real short. People who have to constantly talk about how outrageous and wonderful their sex lives are. It ain't hidden for shit. And that's just what it is because you shouldn't have to brag about it that much. Karen and Mia both lying. I don't believe Karen and I don't believe Mia. Mia talking about, oh, you know, I pick, I pick the girls and they're just beautiful and exotic and they're just unreal. Let me keep this real short. You and Gordon, you and Gordon going down to the mosey wosey and you picking up Betty the blow up dial. That's all it is talking about unreal. <laughs> yeah, because it's a blow up dial. You damn right it's unreal. But anyways, so then Nikki says, listen, you, Karen, and Ashley all married older men. Like, is that the new way? And if you all had $100 million prior to meeting them, would you have married them? The short answer is hell no. And as she said, she said, maybe not. <laughs> I said, well, at least she didn't lie. She tried to, but at least she didn't. And she said, well, I was, I was a bar back. Exactly, Ashley. You were in a place of survival. This old wrinkly predator, you knew he had money. You knew you were bar back in his restaurant. You were 22. You wanted to get your knapsack from out the trash can. And that's what you did. You did what you had to do. So you answered it honestly the first time. If you had $100 million, no. Well, no, maybe not. No, you wouldn't have. So then she tried to clean it up because she said, well, I'm attracted to Michael. And Nikki said, huh, what, what are you attracted to? Because tell us because we don't see it. And she says, well, he's dynamic. He's smart. He's funny. He has such a great sense of humor. And I find him physically attractive. Nobody talks that way. If women find their husbands attractive, they'll say, well, I find my husband physically attractive. They'll say he's hot. 
he's fine, you know, they'll, they'll say a lot of things, and, and I fight him physically, no you don't, there's no way in hell, I don't care how old or how young Michael is, he has never been a good looking man, right, there are some husbands, Mauricio, Juan, Eddie, maybe some others that I'm, that I'm forgetting, they're good looking men, so even as they age, even Mauricio, like a fine wine, honey. Michael ain't that. <laughs> Michael's not that. So you can you can save them lives. You you saw them dollars and wanted to make a house. So that's all it is. So then Nikki asked me, does it make you feel good when someone's husband is attracted to you? That is a great question, and the answer is yes. Mia likes to be the center of attention. She even said it. Well, I've been a sex symbol for most of my life. A sex symbol. Okay. And Candace interrupts and said, we're all intimidated by her. Candace, that interrupting that you, Karen, Giselle, and Mia kept doing, it was sending me. I don't know why you all kept doing it, but it was very, it was very unnecessary. And Nikki even told like, Katie girl, go get that projector. Go get the projector because I'm done. I, I'm done. I'm done with you interrupting me. Like, go get the projector and put it on yourself, right? So, um... Nikki tells Mia, she said, you were, she said, what were you insinuating when you said Eddie didn't want to look you in the eye? And Mia was like, well, I was more so talking or referencing Wendy because she's so controlling. And Nikki told her, she said, well, let me say this. Wendy did play herself by showing so much insecurity, which that's true. I don't remember what I said in the video or in the review for that episode, but Wendy was putting on a little too much. Don't, don't write it like that. Write it like this. Girl, chill. Be easy. But that's that controlling that that Wendy has. And so me agrees and say, yeah, she does played herself. And Wendy said, you played yourself by talking about how my husband wanted you. And me said, well, my husband doesn't mind. And Wendy said, yeah, we know because he'll sleep with another woman in front of you. I said, oh, I mean, Wendy was right. So Nikki was like, well, since you're talking, Wendy, let's go ahead and move on into you. And she says, you're a smart woman. What made you go from being a professor to candles? Now, I will say this. I did not agree with Nikki on this because I don't know why it's a problem that we have hobbies and interests. You're supposed to have hobbies and interests outside of your profession. You can love your profession, but that doesn't need to be your whole world. Just like if you get married, you can love your spouse. That shouldn't be your entire world. It just should not be. You should fill your time with things that you enjoy. And I don't think it's anything wrong with Wendy having four degrees, one of them a PhD, her being a commentator, her being a professor, but then starting a candle line. I mean, how many times, how many times does the black delegation have to beat you over here with invest in real estate? You need to have stocks. You need to do this. You need to have multiple streams of income. But when someone does it, we criticize them. What's wrong with that? There's a um, lawyer. I think he's a referee for the NFL or the NBA. He's a referee. He enjoys doing that. What's wrong with that? If we're encouraging multiple streams of income, why can't, can, why can't Wendy start a candle line? I, so I didn't agree with Nikki on that at all. So then Nikki gets into Eddie following booty miles. Now let me say this. That loud, obnoxious <laughs> laugh that Wendy did, Absolutely 100% Eddie was following booty models. If I didn't believe it before, I believed it after Wendy did that fake, tired, obnoxious laugh. Wendy does not present to me as a woman who doesn't know her man is following booty models. I think she knew it before, but I think once it was exposed, she told him, listen, you need to unfollow all of them. Because here's the thing. That's why, Wendy, you were going through those cards. You wanted to see what Nikki was going to ask you. That's why when Eddie came over and was like, damn, you know, she been drilling people. And you said, I wonder what she going to ask me because you wanted to brace yourself. Stop playing yourself, Wendy. You're a beautiful woman and you play yourself short being controlling and having some of those underlying insecurities. I don't think it helps if Eddie is following Instagram pages that all have something in common, <laughs> like big booties. So, um, yeah, Eddie, plus, plus also Eddie as a married man, just that's not a good look, especially with you being on show. Now, let me also say this. I think it's whack that these blogs do this where they go through who people are following. That has, who, who keeps up with this? Who, I wouldn't care who Juan, Michael, Eddie, none of them follow. 
I don't know why someone would do that. I have no clue. Not my type of hype, not something I ever would do. But listen, Eddie, just as a rule of thumb, you're a married man and you're on a TV show. When y'all first got on there, you should have hit delete on all them profiles. Moving on. Last, but certainly not least, we get to Candace, honey. Now, this was a good question. Nikki said, your mother seems willing to destroy your husband for the world to see. So why doesn't she get checked and how does it make you feel? That first part of the statement, I absolutely agree with it. I absolutely agree with it. That's how deep it is. Candace's mother, Dorothy, is willing to destroy your marriage just to get a few laughs on TV. And if it were me, just me, my mom wouldn't be on the show. Because your mom can only be on the show through you, Candace. She would never come back on that show. What are you doing, filming? What are you going to film with me? Never. See, you want to embarrass my husband on TV? I'm going to remove the common denominator, which is Dorothy. You would not step foot onto Potomac because I wouldn't film with you and Candace. I can't tell you what type of relationship to have with your mother. That's, that's out of bounds for me to do, but that's what I would do. Because your mother is willing to destroy your relationship just to get a little bit of fame from this TV show. Not a good look, no ma'am. So Candace said, you know, it, it upsets me. I've cried over it and it has, you know, impacted my marriage. And so Nikki was like, so why haven't you checked her and why haven't you done it publicly? Listen, I don't know why we have this expectation that people need to check their moms publicly. Now, let me say this. When my mom has crossed boundaries in the past, I have given her that firm boundary. I've reinforced it. There are times where we've had a few little arguments, right? You have to let your parents know what your boundaries are. Even as an adult, listen, I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk to me like that. You can't say those type of things. You have to remind your parents who you are, okay? Uh, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is O, H to the O-V, okay? Because I think sometimes parents have a superiority complex going where, you know, I'm the parent, you're the child. And even as you grow older, some of them may still have that complex. Now, I don't know if that's what's going on with Dorothy, but Dorothy, their relationship is odd to me. She seems to be in competition almost with Candace. And so I didn't agree with Nikki about, well, you need to check your mama. You need to do it publicly. But she's not. Now, Candace, you did sound silly when you said, well, she'll listen to you, Nikki. Candace, if she won't listen to you and you are her daughter, she's not going to listen to a stranger. I don't give a damn that she's a celebrity. So then Nikki says, well, so your mom is okay with you possibly getting a divorce from your husband and the future father to your child or children just to be funny on TV. And Candace said, well, I took a break from her and it was a few weeks. I don't know what additional people are expecting from Candace. Did you think she was going to say, I'm not talking to my mom at all? She's not going to do that. But like I said, I just wouldn't film with Dot. Dot would not be on TV. She wouldn't be on a phone call. She wouldn't be on a FaceTime. She wouldn't be on nothing. And that's how we would resolve that issue, okay? So then Giselle chimed in was like, she shouldn't have to hear it from Nikki and all this. I found it very odd that the most vocal women on the stage regarding Candace have also been very vocal in their lack of support for her and in their, um, in their lambasting and diminishing of, of Candace's character. And we'll talk more about it, right? We'll talk more about it. But I found that interesting that Giselle offered that piece of advice since you were one of the few that you were stirring the pot at that video shoot. You might want to keep you and that gnarled neck of yours closed. So next we get to drive back. Nikki says she actually likes the song. But then she gives a poll to the ladies on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, or 1 being the least successful, 10 being the most successful before the video premiered. How successful did you think the song would be? Now, here comes uh, uh, Mia. She says negative two. And Ken said that's from a place of hateration. It's from a place of honesty. Mia, you wouldn't know what honesty was if it slapped you right in those gnarled jaws of yours. You would not know. It's from a place of honesty. Let me show you how honest Mia isn't. So she lies and she says, I've never even listened to the song. 
And Nikki was like, well, wait a minute. You was at the video shoot. I didn't hear it. It was, it was in the background. I didn't hear. Remember, Mia said that. I didn't hear it. It was in the background. I didn't hear it. Remember, she said that. Remember, we'll get to it later. Remember, she says she didn't hear it and that she's never even listened to the song. Remember that. So Karen says she would give it a five. Candace says, well, you know, I've had half a million streams and Nicki Minaj begins to look around. Now, Nicki reminds me a lot of Mia. Her and Mia like to compete with women. They feel that they have to be the best in the room. And if they're not, they begin to take down the women. They feel they can do it too easily. That's why when Cardi B came on the scene, Nicki couldn't handle it because she had been on her thrown for years without being knocked off but baby a little thing about that table it's always gonna turn the same issue did to Lil Kim calling her old and tired it's your turn Nikki <laughs> it's your turn and so Wendy points out she says well Candace is on the billboard right and Nikki Minaj goes wait 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 which chart because that's important in other words there's only one main chart and maybe a couple of others that are important. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Nikki, what's the last hit you've put out? No shade. What's the last hit you put out? Because Chun Li didn't chart. What did Chun Li do? Y'all remember Chun Li? <laughs> you still pulling the same tricks that you did when you first came out. Let's let's not do that. So. Candace said it's on the R&B chart, number four on iTunes, number 24 on Billboard R&B. And, and Nikki was like, how long has it been out? And she said two months. And so Giselle asked, was well, that good or bad in the music world? And Nikki gives this shady look, but she never answered. I find that ironic, Nikki, because I remember your humble beginnings. I remember you used to walk on stage with two shades of foundation. Your eyeliner would be all over the place and you used to wear Mars Simpson wigs. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You had very humble beginnings. Remember Massive Attack and how you had your record company and label scrambling because it wasn't the hit they thought it was going to be. Matter of fact, it was a flop. You had them scrambling to find another hit. And luckily, you were able to recover. But there's glory in failure. Just because you fail doesn't mean you can't succeed. And you're a mean girl, just like Mia and just like Giselle. That's why you like those two. Because you're a mean girl. You feel like you can, you're the only woman in hip hop that can be at the top. That's been your whole problem with Cardi B. That's been your entire problem. That's why you don't like to work with very many other women artists. Bia don't count. Because Bia's not a threat to you. And you know it. Mia, when, when, when will Bia be the next hip hop queen? She won't. B is not a threat to you, but Cardi was a threat to you. Some of these other ones are a threat to you, and that's why you don't deal with them. But we ain't got to talk about that. We don't have to talk about that. So Nicki Minaj said, well, how many copies did the album sell? And I think Candace said uh, like half a million. And Nicki Minaj was like, no, 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 uh-uh. Ain't no way your album sold half a million. Right? And so Candace looks it up. And Mia was like, you don't already know it? No, she doesn't know it. She just she just got the numbers. And, and anyways, Mia, who are you to keep checking? You can't even keep track of your age. You don't even know how old you are. You didn't keep track of that number, but you worry about what numbers Candace keeping track of. Girl, shut it. What did Wendy say? Shut up. <laughs> don't keep talking. It doesn't suit you well the more you talk. So Candace says, I'm sorry. I've sold a little over 20,000 albums. Nicki Minaj go, what's your album called? D-Space? Sold 20,000 copies? Okay, and she moved on. And you know why? I think Nicki thought Candace was going to say, it sold 5,000. It sold 6,000. When she said 20, she left it alone. She didn't say whether it was good or it was bad, but she was she was being shady. But y'all know Nicki Minaj is a true hater. Now, just my opinion. I know there's some barbs here, but Nicki Minaj can be a true hater. So then Nicki asked Candace to introduce her new video. Is it enough? If you guys were on my live, I watched it live. It's a cute enough video. It's a cute enough song. I bet you they won't say that's low budget though. How about that? Next, 
She said, what would be your selling point to a label? And Candace said, my vocal ability. And you would have thought Candace said me eating a burger the way Nikki was twirling her head and eyes around. Honey, it's about talent. She said, I wouldn't say my dancing or anything else. I would say my pure vocal ability. What's, what, what was she supposed to say, Nikki? That she likes to tussle with the girls on Twitter. What was she supposed to say? So, Nikki and I said, listen, your last song, Drive Back, although I liked it, it was a lot of auto-tune. And she said, so I need to hear something a cappella. I want to hear Drive Back. Now, Candace pauses. She's like, well, I want to do some gospel. Candace, you ain't a gospel artist. I understand you may have wanted to everyone to hear your full range, but you're not a gospel artist, honey. You're, you're a pop artist, R&B artist. Stick with that. So while she's pausing, you hear me and Giselle in the background. Why is she hesitating? Sing, sing. Go ahead and sing something, Giselle. Hurry up. Hit, what, did she, what did she say? Go ahead and bust the tune. First of all, what is this, the 1970s you drive turkey? Who, who busts a tune anymore? Go ahead and bust a tune. <laughs> and it wasn't lost on me that Giselle and Mia, who have not been Candace's biggest supporters, were the two women in the room literally pushing her to sing. And what I took from that is that they wanted to see her fail. So that's why sing, sing, go ahead. Why are you hesitating? Go ahead and sing. They wanted her to hurry up and do it so her voice could crack, so she could forget a lyric. That way they could sit back with their evil little grin, smirking, and going, well, you know, you probably should have warned them before you came here. You know someone going to ask you to sing on the spot, so why won't you warm up? You know Mia always has advice because she's a CEO and a boss. And you know Giselle and every Hugh Beauty is just <laughs> in, in Ulta and Sephora by now. So she got all the advice in the, all the, advice in the world for someone, right? And I found that, it, I didn't find it odd, but it was interesting and wasn't lost on me. This is how mean girls operate. I'm going to force you to do something. Hurry up, sing, sing. Well, why do you care if she sings or not? Weren't you the person talking about she need to get clocked? Weren't you and me, Mia at the video shoot stirring up mess? So why do you care whether she sings or not or what she wants to sing? Telling her to bust a tune. Girl, you you jive turkey. That's all I can think about. What is it, 1970s? You said like, oh my God. Like, what did a scholar say? I would make her more modern. <laughs> so Candace sings, drive back. She sounded well. She did great. She had, you know, round of applause. And here's where Mia got caught in one of her many lines. Mia says, now, you know what? I will download the song. And Nikki said, oh, you want to download it? Yeah, I'll download I'll download that version. What do you mean, that version? First of all, that was acapella. And to my knowledge, Candace has not released an acapella version of Drive Back. So that's one. But what other version are you talking about? Because let you tell it, just five minutes ago, you didn't even listen to the first version of Drive Back. See how you lie? See what happens when you're not quick, Mia? That I'll listen to that version. Well, how can you compare it to the other version if you've never listened to it? You're a liar. I, I don't want to see Mia back. I don't want to see Mia back because she lies too much. So then Annie thought she did great. Um, he comes up to her and actually says, that was wonderful. That was so hard to do and you did it. Everyone stood up and applauded for you. You did, it was, you sounded great. And you know, Andy won line because he was drunk. So you know, he was telling the truth. Now with Chris, Chris Bassett confused me because he came up there and he was pissed. He said he didn't like the line of questioning. And we know that Nikki went hard on everyone because even Eddie said that earlier to Wendy before she even start asking Wendy questions. He was like, damn, she drilling y'all, right? She been drilling them questions. So we know that. And I looked at Nikki's Twitter and she said that she actually asked questions for hours and all we saw was 45 minutes. So it's safe to say she was drilling them. But Chris, here's what I will say. There's a time and a place um, I, I just the dark liquor <laughs> just put down the dark liquor okay because dark liquor will have you row. <laughs> it will row you up like Candace handled herself well 
you know, she was nervous at first, but she went ahead, she belted out drive, drive back, and she did a good job. Everyone said it. Could, there was nobody in the house that could have said that she didn't do a good job. So just, just calm down. Now, I know there's things that we didn't see, but it just kind of felt out of place for me that he was so upset. I did also want to point out one thing. They edited the scene. Giselle was talking to Chris, and Robin walks over with her cape. You know, she don't do nothing else. She gonna cake for Giselle. And she tells Chris Bassett, are you still complaining? Oh, Robin, I know you didn't talk about someone still complaining when all you do is talk about Juan and how he didn't do shit for you and your boys when uh, you was raising them by yourself. I know you didn't talk about still complaining when you still begging Juan that if you have a child for him to be a present father. I know you're not talking about still complaining. I know you're the last one. And Chris said, oh, wait a minute, listen. I had ended it. Giselle started back up. How do you walk into a conversation and you just automatically believe that Giselle is right? Are you still complaining? Yes. And what are you going to do about it? The same way you still complain about Juan. How about that? Now we're even. But anyways, after that, they bring out the tequila. They take shots. And we're done. We are done. <laughs> we are done with season six of The Real Housewives of Potomac. I don't have any predictions. Just... Some, some changes I would like to see in the cast. I want to see the cast more diverse in terms of hue, okay, in terms of tone. Um, we have a cast full of lighter skinned women and they're in a clique. They're, they have an unspoken agreement and you can tell, you know, once, once it clicked for me, the last episode that Ashley probably was put up to talk about colorism or they asked who was going to address it and she she led the charge on it. It was very obvious to me that they talk about the reunion prior to, which is not abnormal, but we can't continue to have Karen, Giselle, Robin, Ashley. Did I miss somebody? Possibly Mia if she comes back. Feigning ignorance when they behave poorly, but when someone who is more melanin rich than them behaves the same way, it's a problem. We can't do that. Um, would I like to see Wendy back? I like to see Wendy back, depending on what she has going on. Candace can come back. They're going to keep Giselle. I don't want to see Mia back. She lies too much. She, she lies too much to try to impress. I don't know who, maybe Giselle, maybe Robin. She lies too much, but if the T is true that she's not coming back, excellent. Sayonara, good riddance, okay? Happy days are here again. I would like to see a Scala. However, a Scala, you're going to have to bring it because when you first came on the show, it was a little bit boring for us as the viewers. But overall, I would love to see some new blood. I want to see some women who are actually friends in real life. Maybe get three or four who are friends. Maybe bring somebody on there that Giselle knows, but they don't get along as someone who's going to serve it to Giselle and Karen. I don't know. I just need to see a mix-up. I need to see a big mix-up. I just don't want to see Mia leave, but we keep everyone else. We need new housewives on Potomac. We can't continue it with what we have going on now. We just cannot do that because it does not work. So... Let me know your thoughts <laughs> about this final episode. Oh my God, it's over. I'm happy. I enjoyed it though. It wasn't bad for me. You know, I'm not to the brink where I will say that I won't watch it again, but it needs to be a major shakeup for me. Like Karen doesn't have anything else going on. What else can go on with her and Ray? Nothing. Let them be happily ever after. Giselle brings nothing, but they're going to keep her. Robin shouldn't come back. Ashley shouldn't come back. I damn sure don't want to see Mia back. We need at least three or four new housewives. And maybe these three or four are friends in real life. And maybe they're not friends with Giselle. We need to shake it up. We need to shake it up. So that's all I'm going to say. My brain, it is late. It is almost midnight, honey, so I'm tired. But let me know your thoughts. Get down in the comments and let me know what you thought about this last episode. I probably skipped around a lot um, because Nicki Minaj actually asked a lot of questions 
So, um, and she, and she had a lot of commentary. And at first I didn't realize that watching it, but on the replay, I was like, oh damn. So I probably missed some things. Get down, tell me your thoughts. And if there is nothing else, I will see you all later. Mwah. Bye.